20,000 people, look at all this emotion! Good evening, Olympic Hall. If you want to be successful, you have to be abnormal. Unlike everyone else, success is always a struggle. It's always growth, pain. If you want to be successful, you have to be ready to lose it all. When I was at school, I wasn't the best in the class. I didn't get the best grades. I was an average student. After a particularly bad term, my parents told me they wouldn't buy me a bike. It had been my dream to buy a bike. You know, an adult one. When my parents wouldn't buy me that bike, I went out to collect bottles. In secret. I managed to collect over 500 bottles. If you can imagine, that's several bags. That's over 30 crates. I handed them in at the collection point. I did it quickly, in two weeks or so. I got exactly 65 rubles for them. And I bought myself a Ural bike. You know what lesson I learned? You don't have to study to achieve your goals. It's not like I had no choice. I could have sat at home, studied hard. And my parents would have bought me that bike. But I didn't do that. You can study all you like. You can read all the books in the world, but that won't make you rich. By the same token, no business theorist will make you rich either. The only one who can teach you is a millionaire themselves. Someone with real-world experience, who knows how, who's walked it by themselves. Study all you like, but this world already has enough reclusive nerds. People say you have to have talent, but this world is full of untapped talent. Genius, perhaps. The world is full of failed geniuses. So what exactly do you need to be rich and successful? Ask the VIP zone. All you need is stubbornness and persistence. If you want to be rich and be successful, you have to be ready to lose. There is only one road to true greatness, and that road is through suffering. This was said by Albert Einstein. You have to be ready to lose everything. You have to be abnormal like him. Just think, you're sitting in the VIP zone. You have everything you need. You're doing pretty well. Now imagine, you don't have your phone, don't have money, your car, your apartment's been taken over by strangers. Your wife can't get through to you. She doesn't know what's going on. You don't even have the money to call a cab or book a hotel. You have nothing. Now imagine, just the suit you're wearing and that's it. Maybe you say that doesn't happen, that it's impossible. Perhaps. But if you want to be rich, then you have to be ready for that. I've gone bankrupt three times. Three times. Bankrupt. Fell to my knees. Fell to the bottom. According to Brian Tracy, the average self-made millionaire has been bankrupt or close to bankrupt 3.2 times. On average. 
Perhaps it's hard to believe, but just three years ago, I had nothing to eat. I was going hungry. This is pearl barley. I'll never forget the taste of pearl barley. Pearl barley is the cheapest grain you can buy here, just 24 cents a packet. I lived a few months, me and my family, on this pearl barley. What you see here, minus 20 odd pounds, is all I had three years ago. But you have to be prepared for that, because success is about risk, pain, persistence, always. In 2013, I created a company and invited my friend to be my partner. I even trusted him without managing the company. We really started to build the company, made millions in turnover. We were on a roll. My friend's greed went to his head. He decided to seize the business. And how do you get a partner out of a business? Screw them over. Ruin their reputation. Threaten their family. Like the best Hollywood action movies. What you see here is the presidential suite. This is the room. I held a press conference here in this very room, in Amara Dolce Vita, Turkey, a fantastic room. Got a visit from some Turkish friends. Well, at least I thought they were the kind of people who I could trust. So these Turkish friends visited, brought their own whiskey. For some reason. And started asking stupid questions. We had a drink. And basically, when I came round, there was a half-naked girl on top of me. Still hazy, I tried to work out what had happened. The safe's open, the money's gone, got no documents, no cards, no phone, no nothing. And then these huge Turkish goons hand me my passport and chuck me outside. This is January, T-shirt, slippers, tracksuit pants, nothing else at all. My wife thought she'd lost me. I wasn't answering my phone. No one knew where I was. A few days later, I managed to get out of Turkey. It turns out, in this room, over there, behind the TV, there were hidden cameras, and they'd made an incriminating video for my partners, for my friends, for my wife. And they said they would show it to my partner so they could kick me to the curb. I wasn't prepared for this. Then they said, your wife will be next. My wife at the time was six, going on seven months pregnant. I realized what a risk this was for my wife and child. I was mad. They were slinging mud, screwing me over. My blood was boiling. I was being tracked. I had a tracking device placed under my car several times. My friends at the service station removed them. Then they started spying on me. They put a tail on me, a guy who followed me on foot in his car. I wanted to kill him and I was ready to kill him. I'd attended a military academy. I'd had special training. I'd been trained to kill for several years. So this whole cocktail, this hellish cocktail of resentment and experience was just about ready to spill over at any moment. I was ready to do it, to top him. What would you do if your family was being threatened? It was a choice, and a lot of sleepless nights. On the one side was my family, on the other, a serious business. I made a decision. I couldn't even find this person. He didn't come to meetings. He went abroad, even changed his name. But now I can say this. Alexei, or whatever you're called now, Alex, I forgive you.
I'm standing in front of these 20,000 people and I'm saying, most importantly, thank you, Alex. I owe it to you that I'm standing on this stage right now. I thank you for what I've now achieved. I thank you for what I've now have. I thank you for the new perspective you gave me and for changing the way I view life. Everyone, everyone in this room knows a person who screwed them over. Everyone. And all the camera operators and all of you in the VIP zone have someone who you want dead. Forgive them. Thank them. Thank them for what you now have. Because it's them who were the catalyst for your success and what you have now. Let go of the past. Think of the future. The greatest companies are born in the hardest times. Your most valued financial asset is your earning ability. As long as you have a head on your shoulders, arms and legs in place, who cares what money or business you used to have? This is what's important, and you'll get up again. What is it that helped me? There were four things which helped me survive and get up again. First of all, it was my family. When I got back home, nothing, not a single complaint. My wife said to me, we'll be, our kids were this size, we'll be with you, no matter what you do. If you want to start a new business, start one. Do it. I know you can. You know what I want to say to you? There's nothing more valuable, nothing on earth, than the support of your family. Behind every strong man, no matter how macho, there is a wise and strong, Woman. Men are single task primates. Ladies, if you want your man to be a millionaire, stand by his side. A man cannot fight on two fronts. If there's harmony at home, if the home front is in order, he'll move mountains, he'll achieve everything. Everything he wants and everything you want. It all depends on women. Two. I was helped by stories of successful people. I sat down and read, again and again, online, in books. Robert Kiyosaki in his career has been bankrupt three times. His most recent bankruptcy was in 2014. So what? Budasheva has been bankrupt three times. The first time he went bankrupt, he was just 26 years old. And he had enormous debts. So what? Donald Trump, four times bankrupt, 1991, 1992, 2004, and 2009. The last time he found himself in debt, he had a debt of almost a billion dollars. Can you imagine a billion? So what? Now he has a fortune of almost $4.5 billion. Can you imagine the strength you need to get up again? Three. The third thing that helped me was my military training and discipline. You need discipline so that when you have to choose between what you want most of all and what you want now, you always choose the former. Discipline is not a limitation of freedom. It's filtering out everything you don't need. If you have a goal, if you're focused on it and it doesn't matter, doesn't matter at all what happens or what might happen to you, you'll be successful in any case. And four, have a clear goal. At military school, I was a member of the military sports team. 
I was the best performer on the obstacle course. I would get up at six every morning and just go through the obstacle course every day. Ditch, labyrinth, wall, broken bridge, broken stairs, hole in the wall, foxhole and back again. I was the absolute best, better than anyone. In one competition, a team competition, I set off against my opponent. I jumped off the broken bridge, about the height of a shed, and landed badly on my foot. I heard the joint crack. It was so painful, I nearly blacked out. I fell down. When I lifted my head, my opponent was ahead of me. I just looked at my goal. The pain vanished. I got up and finished the race. I overtook him and finished first. What was that? When I finished, my friends carried me to the medical unit. I had to wear a cast and use crutches for two months. Where did that strength come from? When your eyes are on your goal. You forget everything else. Henry Ford once said, obstacles are those frightful things. You see, when you take your eyes off, your goals. When you're obsessed, when you're focused on your goal, you don't feel pain. You forget to have lunch. You don't notice time passing. You need to have a goal. When you're obsessed, when you're inspired, you have enthusiasm, fire in your heart. To be successful, you have to have a goal. Those are the four things that help me take back my life. Focus on your goals and dedicate your life to them. So remember, I was left with nothing, and I decided to build a business from scratch. Perhaps you're faced with the same choice now. But what can we offer people nowadays? What brings profit? What kind of business do people need today? Where there's no competition and no risk, what exactly can we offer people? We all know well enough that the world's wealth is owned by people. People have all the money. That means that if you want that money, you have to give people something they need. Something that's in demand. What do people need today? You know what I found? Maslow's hierarchy of needs. All of us here have the same needs. First of all come our psychological needs. Think about them when you want to create something. What can we give people? Food, water, sleep, sex, air, the basics. Throughout human history, once we have food, what do we want next? A cave a feeling of safety, a roof over our head. I looked at what available ways there are to buy property. We can pay in full or take out a mortgage. Before the crisis, 15% of Russians could buy a property outright and just 5% after the crisis. The rest take out a mortgage. 70% are refused because mortgages are hard to get. Pay attention. I took an interest. I looked into it more and found that 80% of people are in need of at least a better house or apartment. This means that four or five people in this room want to or plan to buy or upgrade some property right now. That's a staggering figure. I looked at the other options. There's good old housing co-ops. 
So what did I do? I simply combined housing co-ops with network marketing. I looked into it and realized nobody has done it before, not in America, not Australia, nor Europe, anywhere. I was shocked that nobody has had this idea. We've had a network marketing for almost a century. We've had properties, housing co-ops and construction for longer. How come nobody has combined them before? OK, I had my idea, but remember, I had nothing at all. To start a new business, a new enterprise, you need money, you need resources. After all that happened, many people turned their backs on me. And you know, when you're doing OK, nobody cares. When you're doing badly, nobody cares. Double. Relationships are the key thing. Always maintain relationships with people, with your partners. Even if they work in different companies, in different fields, keep in touch with them. Relationships destroy businesses. Relationships create businesses. They create everything. I started calling people I knew. I was surprised to find about 40 people simply said yes and gave me money. I asked everyone I could still call or meet with. One of them, he must be somewhere here tonight, said, Hiraman, take the money, you need it more. Although he had millions in debt himself. But he gave me the money. I assembled a team of lawyers and a team of accountants, rented an office and started business. You can take my factories and my money, burn up my buildings, but give me my people. And before you know it, I'll build a business right back again and come out ahead of you. Make your own decisions. Any decision you make, even a wrong one, is far better than indecision. There are only two options. Either you decide or somebody else decides for you. How much you work, when you work, where you live, when you have a holiday, and how much money you earn. There are only two options, and you have to learn to make decisions and take this step. Take responsibility. The life you're living now is the result of how much responsibility you take or fail to take. You see? Perhaps you're driven by fear or held back by fear. But fear is like snake venom. It's deadly in large quantities, but in small doses it helps you grow stronger. More importantly, if you feel fear, you must be on the right path. I was very scared too. You're on the right path if you're feeling fear, because you're out of your comfort zone. When you get out of your comfort zone, you develop. Your comfort zone and your success are opposites. Same with your happiness and your comfort zone. The comfort zone has destroyed more people than all of the sins taken together. If you're looking for stability, stability in medicine means death. Stable means dead. As soon as you stop in your comfort zone, you start decaying, because life moves very quickly. It goes on all the time. That's why making decisions is a key skill you need to have. Ilya Muromets comes to a stone with a prophecy written on it. You go left, you get your ass kicked. You go right, you get your ass kicked. You go straight, you get your ass kicked. Ilya gets thinking. Then a voice comes from above. Come on, make up your mind or I'll kick your ass right here. You get your ass kicked either way. But if you take this step, make a decision, you might have a chance of winning. If you refuse to make decisions, you're bound to keep losing your whole life. And it's much better to lose and have a chance to win. It's better to make decisions. 
Recently, I climbed Europe's highest peak, the west summit of Mount Elbus, 18,510 feet. I went there without any preparation, without training. Well, I'm abnormal, just like this VIP zone. There were 12 of us, but only me and my guide reached the summit. When we reached the Pastuchov rocks at 16,000 feet, my heart was racing so fast, I thought my temples would explode. When we reached the saddle, I was starving for oxygen, gasping for air like crazy. My knees and arms were shaking. My muscles were giving way. I was exhausted. You take a sneakers out and just throw it away because you've got no energy. I was at the saddle. The summit's right there. But I was done. Combustion engines don't work up there. There's no air. Helicopters can't land up there because the air density is too low. A helicopter would fall down and never get up again. It's a mountain only humans can climb. I saw people being carried down from the summit. They were green, bluish green in the face, being dragged past me. The guides would tie them to their belts by their legs to keep their heads facing up and drag them down. What's the secret? To climb the summit of Mount Elbrus, you need to take small steps. Breathe. Step. Breathe. Step. This is called the Himalayan step. Small steps are easy to take. You take small steps, and if you don't stop, you'll reach the summit sooner or later. Success comes with tenacity, in life and business alike. All you need is to keep walking. That's one of my basic principles. You must always take another step. Always. No matter what happens, another step. No matter what happens, another step. A warrior may worry and think before making any decision, but once he makes it, he goes his way, free from worries or thoughts. That's the warrior's way. Carlos Castaneda, a man of mystery, once a decision is made, everything becomes easy. Stay faithful to your dream. Stay faithful to your decision. Never contract friendship with a man that is not better than thyself. Your personality is defined by who you surround yourself with. What's that mean? Communicate with successful people. Communicate with famous people. Talk to people who are better than you. Learn from the winners. I've got an oar hanging in my office. When people come into my office, they understand what they can talk about and what they can't. Have you seen the Titanic? When the ship started to sink, there weren't enough lifeboats, people in the water. Each boat was manned and there was a sailor with an oar. Remember what he did with that oar? He stopped people from clinging onto the boat. If he let them hang onto the side of the boat, then the Cree would sink along with the people. Don't allow failure to cling on to you. Don't let people around you complain. Don't let the people around you talk negatively. Learn from the best. Talk to the winners. Cleanse yourself of negative people. This will stop your energy being drained. Did I think back then, hungry, humiliated, crushed, robbed, Back then, when I was reading the Trump story, that just two years later, I'd be sitting with him in his office and talking to him personally. You can do anything. If you believe in your dream, you can achieve anything, no matter who you are. You know? You're a magnet, whatever you talk about. That's what you attract. Always talk positive. If you talk about failure, 
You get stuck with it. If you talk about a problem, you get stuck with it. Rich people always talk about opportunities. That's why they're rich. What we are today comes from our thoughts of yesterday. And our present thoughts build our life of tomorrow. Our life is the creation of our mind. If you think you can do something and if you don't, you'll be right either way. There is a photo of that very guy whose parents didn't buy him a bike. It's very difficult to speak right now. Because over these two days, these speakers, these great speakers, have said practically all the words and thoughts I've been wanting to tell you. It's once again proof that we're all talking about the same thing. We're all talking in different words about one and the same principles, the principles of success. So that's that. If I'd been able to beat myself in my childhood, think. If you'd had that opportunity, and you'd have just one minute to say three things, three pieces of advice for yourself, what would you say to yourself? Dream. Keep your dreams in front of you. Think positive. The first thing is positivity. Successful people are always decisive. They do a lot more than other people. Make decisions. That's the second thing. Third, keep your word. Breaking a promise won't condemn you to the fires of hell. You'll receive punishment already in this life. That's three important things that I would say to myself. First, think positively. Second, make decisions. And third, keep your word. When I went bankrupt for the last time, Here's what I said to myself. Roman, come on, how old are you? I ask you the same question. How old are you now? How much have you lost? How much has gone to waste? How much do you have left? And when are you planning on living? While you sit here, while you sleep, eat, wait, and think, your time is ticking away. Time is valuable. Where's your life you dreamed of? Where's that house you wanted? When are you planning to do all that? You have to live now. Don't let a moment go to waste. You need to enjoy life right now. While your head's still on, arms and legs intact, Get enjoyment from these people, from this water, from this air, every step, every moment. Your head is on your shoulders, legs and arms intact. Live, enjoy your life, get enjoyment from life. I've been Roman Vasilenko. Thank you, forum participants. Give a hand to business expert and founder of the International Business Academy, Roman Vasilenko.